All right. I, and we're, we're back now. Um, I guess something happened here with the with the lightning and the thunder. Uh, so I've started again. I'm gonna, it's going to be a pain in the neck putting this together. But um, you know, we're, I, I, you know, hopefully people will find this next link. Really aggravating in doing this. Um, especially you guys are probably all aggravated hearing me do this. But uh, let me post this up here. I remember where I left off, so I'm not going to. Why does it do this stuff? Man, does this aggravate me? All right, we're trying to do this. Uh, <clears throat> I, you know what I'll probably do is I'll, I'll either put these together or I'll edit or something afterwards. More work to do. But when you got, I'll start off where I left off where I saw where I left off on the, on the show. Um, the, you have the riots in the West, and that's okay because they're furthering their goals and the threat of perhaps of not playing along. Now you have people on the ground. And then when you have a protest and look what happened on uh, July 6th, you have now because the courts have allowed mandated, they let out all other videos As you see that you have the police escorting them in talking with them. You know, you have the you have the people testifying in court. Oh my gosh, these police are crying going, I, I was, my life was threatened. And then you see the actual video of them being escorted in and talking. You have the reporters are there. They're all talking together before they're setting up shoots and so forth. People who got shot were, you know, the, the lady was shot, had no gun or no fourth, no, no fun. They just wouldn't tell who did it. It finally come out. It's obvious that this was being used for their live action role play. They wanted to have go with having the Trump supporters trying to take over the government, you know, and then, you know, where they got that idea from too was uh, Q talking about how they were going to come in and do this stuff. So they were taking their cue from another live action role playing group. Just like uh, listening to these other shows, uh, these other going to these other websites, you have the two groups against one another coming up with their own live action role playing. So, you see the narrative here is we have to put fences and armies around our, our our government because we're going to be afraid of the Trump supporters. Well, no, they're just afraid of what's coming farther. They want to be prepared, and we'll get to that in a minute. You also see now the um, because of the people who've been out of work and been given money not to work, now there's a shortage of workers. I, I don't know. I don't. I, that, it, that doesn't make total sense on me because people still need to go back to work once the money stops. But you have now the shortness of 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 work, which works into the role playing uh, drama of shortages. When people can't get the things they need to eat or you know wipe their butt, they're going to panic. They're going to be be able to be manipulated by the Things are doing it here. So you have the COVID excuse now for backed up deliveries, uh, backed up stuff uh, on the ocean. You have things missing off the shelf. You have the, well, it was COVID as excuse, not their reaction to it, which was gold uh, meant from the beginning to shut things down, create this break. And now there's a, you know, only so many containers can travel from a ship onto the uh, port. (coughs) Excuse me onto the port, and go to the next destination, uh, go on the rail, go to the rail yards, go in the trucks, and be delivered. Always so many can happen per day. It's a limited capacity. I mean, normally they make the capacity, but so now they're backed up. Oh, COVID. Now people are worried. Oh, we're not going to have stuff for Christmas for our kids. We're not going to have food. We're not going to have toilet paper. Get them in that worried mode. They're not going to be going after the government. 
and what they're doing. They're more worried about what they need. It's the goal. Now, people are. There are people going after the government and showing them, hey, you did this, you did that. There's protests going on. There's the uh, the whole, uh, what is that, way to go, Braden, whatever whatever the, that saying is, which really was uh, F, F you, Biden, hasn't changed around. You have all this stuff coming out there. And the media, the goal of the media is to kind of, they're gonna, they're out there in this live action role playing. They're trying to be able to use their power of the media to talk down anybody that does it. If as I wrote it on here, um, uh, uh, live action role play. No matter how bad the contradictions or errors, do not they do not address them, but they attack those who do. Uh, point out the problems, and they change reality and how you look at it to prove that of their actions. They still maintain that this whole COVID thing was uh, that they, they couldn't have done anything better. Like if they would have done what they should have done, which was use anything that comes up. People say, "Hey, you know, hydrochlor- hydrochloroquine and all this work. You know, we've used that here and there. Let's try it. Let's try it. You know, we, these people are getting sick. We got to try something. Let's try it." No. They talk it down. They push it out because they don't want it to work. I mean, I'm not being paranoid by saying that. Look at the evidence. The stuff is being shown right now with all the stuff that is coming out. It does work. They said it didn't work and it was dangerous. Well, it was so dangerous. Why is it available like all over the world, over the counter? They just had a, a breakout of COVID in India. To combat it, the Indian government gave out the Ziverdu pack which is a grouping of uh, Irometra and other things, they give this stuff out to the people. And you look at the data, the COVID comes up, boom, it goes down. And a lot of other uh, stuff, and in, in, in you go into Israel, the, the data shows that the majority of people who are getting ill, seriously ill, and dying from COVID have had the vaccinations. So obviously the vaccination's goal was not to help you with COVID because it's not. So what is the goal? And what is the goal of all this stuff? Well, it's forever. Goals of governments have been to track and create ways to control the people. Remember, the people to them are the farm animals on the farm. They produce, a, a there's a production value in them. Some of them do work and produce goods and services. Other ones are just simply bulk that they could use to to vote for and so forth. In the case of a farmer, no one votes for him, but the the idea is that there's roles for these people to play, and they're looked at as farm animals. They're animals. When people say, hey, wait a minute, you don't got the same roles we do, if they were honest, they would say, well, of course not, because you're an animal and I'm superior. Why would I have the same rules as that? You don't have the same rules for farm animals than, than the people in, in, in the farmhouse, do you? Well, why would you say that about us? We're obviously superior over to you. You're dumb. You're gullible. And the ones who aren't can get weeded out. And so uh, they want to they want to tax the rich. Meanwhile, they want to uh, start looking on a $600 uh, or more. I think they've changed. They've lowered. They've raised it up now. To a higher level because of the outrage from the animals. And so you can see that the goal in Fox and some Republicans, they're still doing it. They're still, uh, you know, they're pulling punches. They're not doing it because, the again, they're the, the controlled opposition, controlled opposition and media's goal is to pretend to be someone fighting against them. Now, there are those who are, very small number. So now we think and go, oh, yeah, it's the Republicans are helping us. They're not. Some are, but they're not. And they can blame those who are Republicans on their side because they're the controlled opposition. Like, oh, all these guys want to do this. They want to do that. Whether they do or not is irrelevant. They can just say it, and their people believe it, and they follow it. No matter how bad the contradictions or errors, they will not address them. And you can look at the press secretary when they talk about things that Biden has said and done and results that have happened, gloss over it, say, a willing, uh, uh, compatriots in the liberal individuals out there who don't like for whatever reason. They, they're they playing the race card so they can get the various races against the whites. And 
They're playing the economic cards. You have the poor against the rich, even though they're the richest of all. You look at these people, Pelosi, Maxine Waters, they live in these mansions and their their constituencies are, are slums. No one says, hey, what about that? Because they're on the team, be it controlled opposition or not. They're on the team. This is a big live action role play that's been going on. The goal is to stop the nationalism, crush the business, crush the economics, devalue the dollar, crush the dollar so that things will go down here. This won't then threaten the global globalism that's going on. So I said, wait a minute, can't you see what they're doing? They're hurting the economy. Yes, they want to hurt the economy. They want to hurt the infrastructure. They want it to fail. Well, if you comply to ever what they wanted, right, these things wouldn't be happening. It'd still be going down. I mean, we'd be going down into serfdom. That's the goal, is to have the super, super rich and the super poor, like they've had over and over and over again for millennia after millennia. Do a perusal of history and look and see what has happened throughout all of history. It's the same story. The people at the top crush the people at the bottom. And once in a while, you get a good king or a good queen. Once in a while, it'll happen, and then their offsprings go right back to where it was. The flow throughout history is who, how many can I control and how rich and powerful can I get? And when, as you get up more and more, you need to have more power. You know that old story that said, uh, when Alexander couldn't conquer anymore, that he sat down and cried? Well, I, from what I've read, that's not true. But just take that for a sample. He wants to conquer. He doesn't want to maintain. He wants to conquer. So when you get rich and you have you have something the other ones, you each got a you each got a uh, Da Vinci in your in your parlor, right? Well, that's not good enough anymore. I got to have something else. So as you get up more and more to the top, it starts to be a show of your power and wealth to turn to more evil things. <coughs> you can have uh, multiple affairs, uh, have kids, do it, and just use your money to push them all away, and then come look, look nice, look as a saint to the public. Or you can even get down and dirty and have uh, a child sex, or uh, you know, go through trafficking or cannibalism. There is no limit to the evil that can be done with the as the power increases. Who stopped Caligula from doing anything? You look throughout history, so many people did unbelievable disaster. Look, look at um, Vlad Tapes, you know, as he was eating dinner with a with a uh, uh, classical musicians while kids, people uh, people were being impaled on six, seven-foot stakes, and they were watching him wiggle and scream and fall to the ground. I mean, what? He couldn't have done that by asking people to go along with things. He did it because his power got high enough and he could do whatever he wanted. No one stopped him. And what happens when you get this type of power that you have when you're billionaires and you have fraud and you have blind supporters and you have the LARPing of your fellow players in the media, in in the power, in, the, in, in, in um, corporations, in politics, and you have it across the world, you have your compatriots, your, your your companions who are also doing these deep, dark, evil things because they're power. You know, you're in the club. You're in the club. They can go into uh, pedophile and, and whatnot, cannibalism. You're in that club. It's okay. Those doors are closed. Anything goes, and it's okay because you're that powerful. When you get to these levels, you think it matters what I or you think? And the problem is, they'll say, well, we'll, you know, we'll take back. You know, we'll take back the Congress. Well, you know, Republicans will take back the Congress. Well, first of all, Republicans aren't your friends. Some are. They're not your friends. They're controlled opposition in this. It's the yin, it's a good cop, bad cop scenario in there. So a lot of these guys, Mitch McConnell and all these, have shown their spots. So they're not going to help you, right? Secondly, you just had these elections with huge fraud that have been demonstrated beyond, like, ridiculousness. Video of people doing things, the counts are off in terms of uh, you're having more people voting than even are registered, you know, and so on. You have all this. What's going to change next time? If all of a sudden people are going to be honest, they're all part of the LARP. 
they're all going to do their part in the live action role playing of globalism. They're that part in it. And so, well, the next election, we're going to take it back. How? What has been done? Well, some states have reenacted election laws, which uh, are, right now they're trying to thwart that because it isn't 2022 yet. And so the uh, globalist federalists have, are trying, and they may succeed. Uh, courts may back them up, whatever, to try and change things. But that's got to be changed or it doesn't matter because all the votes will just go that way. It doesn't matter what Trump says. It doesn't matter what DeSantis says or Noam or uh, Abbott. All these guys are they're doing good, right? But it doesn't matter if the federal elections in these states, the states, the swing states, if it doesn't matter if they have the the, the mail-in vote, just mail out the things and get them back in. Don't check them. Don't, don't, it doesn't matter. Uh, so when you're looking, and this was, will Trump want to get rent again? Will he do this and that? Will he, you know, and, and there's a lot of people who have have fans in here. They're they're fans of Trump. I'm not a fan or I'm not not a fan of Trump. I picked him myself as as uh, the options is that he was was the best chance of standing up against these people, even though he could have he, he wasn't the perfect one. He was he wasn't he was there was nobody else who's going to stand up that was in, in the running. Now we're getting some more people who are being, uh, you know, made. Now, I don't know if they're controlled opposition as well. There's people who say it's all a LARP. It's all a game. And even the best guys you think are on your side are only on their limited. They're letting them say this stuff to think, yeah, see, we got him in there. We got Jim Jordan or whoever. We got this guy in here. Yeah, it's going to help, right? So they have these, these people who are doing it. And it's all part of the LARP. And I look at it this way is that when you have the people at the top as being as powerful as they are and depraved as they are, they cannot lose. If they lose, you know, that the famed statement that Hillary said that if he wins, we'll all be hanging, right? If that if she really said it or not. But let's say she did, that's true. If they actually lose and you actually have investigations, honest ones that return to stuff. These people are traitors. They're, 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 uh, uh, various people are, they're traitors. They're child sex traffickers, cannibals, Satanists, whatever, whatever it is. They're, they're terrible. Some are in there in those chains. You get to a point where they are unspeakable, abominable because that, because when your goal is to be powerful and have privileges, when other people have the privileges, you are more powerful. You want to have more privileges. You have to create those privileges. And when gold is no longer a privilege, you know, perhaps human blood for dinner is or something. You know, I mean, this is the way the mind works. And people listening go, oh, that's crazy. You're being, no, no. All history, people have done this. <coughs> and I wish I can give you names and all that because I'm not good at memorizing details. And it's common across Europe where they have the Vithagoth kings and, and the Vikings and all this stuff. On it. And when they would win, they would get the king, they'd kill him, they'd take his head, turn it into a vessel to drink out of, and he'd sit there and drink out of his uh, head. You know, it's all symbol of the power and how they put down that other king, you know, and why, why kings don't like dictators. Because the, the kings think that they're put there by God in some way. Dictators use force to get there. They're like the mafia compared to, you know, the rich, rich folk, they're using crude methods to get what they are. And of course, when the rich folk, the, you know, the cultivated folk, when they need those crude methods, well, they got their people who they call on to do it. So when you have this aspect, when you're looking at all this, they can't afford to lose and they don't have any scruples about me or you. There's no like, well, we can't really do that to them. No, that's no, there is nothing that's not doable if their success is on the line. Now, once you get that and you really understand that and you digest that inside you and know that inside you, you start to see how bad things are. And this is what I, I don't want to do shows and go out there and scream about how bad things are. You got to understand how bad it is and how hopeless it is, even though here and there good things are happening. It's still possible. Here's where I've put my trust in God. 
oh, what if there isn't a God and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. If there isn't a God, it doesn't matter, does it? Right? So I'm not worried about if there's a God or not. I've already been through life and seen things happen, so I can come to my own conclusion. Can I prove it to you? I don't know. Probably not. At least, mo- you know, some maybe. But this is where our hope lies. And when I start reading the Bible stuff in Matthew with, with G- uh, Jesus talking, boy, I'm telling you, it's fitting right up here. And it's happening fast and getting bad. So when you when you finally, and it's not like a black pill, right? You know, the black pill stuff out there, I don't like that. Red pill stuff, okay. Blue pill is when you're when you're diluted, you know. Some people have called a white pill when you when you when you deal with God, uh, you're working with God and this stuff. God's going to allow things to happen here for a purpose, and the big picture, and people will be rep- recompensed for what they have done or suffered. That's a given. Uh, am I looking at it? just while you're alive in this? You want to make sure that you're doing your part, doing what you can within your frame, within your your financial, within your emotional, your spiritual abilities to do what God would have you do for this bigger LARP that's going on where you have this play orchestrated by God to allow people to come to this come to this planet in this 3D existence to have some control over our destinies and there's 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 a going to be rewards and punishes built into the system. You know, if you steal from somebody and you think that you're getting something for nothing, well, one time you steal, the guy isn't going to shoot you, or you get caught and you go to prison. You see, there's there's consequences for your choices. If you don't choose to steal from anybody, you'll never end up going to prison or being shot for trying to steal things. So this is what the the, the whole point of us being here is we all got a, a, so, a so-called kind of a LARP of our own. And if we, if we end up following the principles taught by Jesus as how we play our roles in this game, we will have a spiritual victory regardless of what happens in the details of the material game. Where one goes, we all. Where one goes, one we all go. Uh, we all we go all is bad. It allows people to have people do things without having a logical moral reason for it. It's just because, hey, you're on the group. We decided this. You got to do it, and you got to back them up. Bad, bad thing. You want to do, we'll find out what the principles that Jesus taught and follow those principles through all of what's happening. Because the goal here is not to live because you are going to die someday. The goal is not to stay alive. The goal is to live properly while you live, to do the things Jesus said, to help one another, to uh, give of yourself when, when you can and what where a situation is, to, to do these things while in this down oppressive situation. Stick to those principles. Take whatever comes to you and do it because you're standing on those principles because they are right. They're the reality that we have to stay in and stay out of the fantasy, whether it be a fear or power that's being played out before us, for us. And you could tell when you're, when it's a LARP as opposed to real because of the lack of contradiction that are in reality, that, that situation, the lack of contradiction is the definer of what is real because, because reality doesn't have to do anything to stay real. When you're in a LARP, you got to keep juggling things and contradictions and change. No, I never said that. And, you know, and the, and YouTube has been great for over the years to show the contradictions that have happened as they've had to literally do 180s to keep their the ball in the air, so to speak, on their end. So when you're stuck, when you're actually in reality and you're doing the right things for the right reason, you're following the teachings of Jesus and you're doing them, what happens to you here is not the goal. It is the goal what happens in eternity. And I'm not even getting into like whether you go to heaven or hell in as much as the quality of life in the in your next life is directly correlated to your principles in this life. I don't want to hear the various doctrines of, you know, once saved, always saved, say these words, you're, 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 uh, you're, you're predestined, all this. Forget all of that stuff. I don't want to hear all that stuff. I follow the words of Jesus only. Jesus said this. 
Now, we can trust what he said because while a lot of critical uh, textual critics say, well, we can't really know if Jesus really said it, my logical uh, uh, took on it, not that I wanted it to be true, when I went back and revisited everything, including God and the Bible, I want truth. That's what I want. I don't, I don't want anything that I want. I want truth. And from the truth, I'll be real, and that'll be what it is. And what I have personally have come to in, in, in is the words of Jesus are true because people remember, remember those in pieces. If you look at the, the Sermon on the Mount, you know, it's blessed are the poor. Uh, well, they, you know, blessed are the mercy and so forth. They'll be comforted and so on. That is a, a little bit. People remember those bits. They put them together. And you have a sermon on the mount. So what's being said, whether he said it all at once, whether it was on a mount, whether it was on a hill, whether well, how come some parts are missing from Luke, not, it's irrelevant. The pieces that have been remembered and put together in these things, those words are the relevant. All that other stuff is, is distractions. When Jesus says these things, he is a human with direct, I don't know what, the substance or c- communication with God. God is going through him in earth, and those principles are being taught purely. And you follow those principles, and you will live. When when Jesus was teaching pretty bad stuff, uh, people were getting kind of upset by what he was saying. You must eat my body and drink my blood in order to do this stuff, using the metaphor of cannibalism, so to speak, to digest the things that he's saying are so important, you have to eat them and have them come into your body and be part of you. You have to follow this stuff intimately, automatically, innately, and using the metaphors of, like, cannibalism, people were getting turned off by that. Whoa, they're leaving. Jesus looked at the disciples, who probably didn't have a great look on their face, because he says, are you going to leave too? And their response, I thought, was really good. To whom can we go? You have the words of life. They knew he had the words of life. Didn't necessarily like the way he's delivering it at this point, but he knows they have the words of life. And I know that as well. So when I, when I go out and I see all this flawness in the world, I mean, I see all the, uh, how many people follow the Q stuff and, oh, they're in the, you know, have popcorn and watch. It's all going to start. It's all, it went up for years. And here we are. We're, 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 well, you know, I, I see these things in there. Well, you know, they're, 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 they're starting to get nervous. No, they're not. They're drunk with power. They thought they've won. Show me where they've lost. Whenever they've come up to a point where it was a stagnant, a new problem comes up. All of a sudden, the Afghan thing is up. They're taking taking view off things. What about Biden and his his uh, investments with his son? What about, that's all gone. Where's the the commission? Uh, that's still possible to come out. But when you ha- when you have the DOJ and you have the FBI and you have the White House all being on the side of the globalist LARPist group, how how are you going to get justice out of that? It will happen eventually. Because the principles and reality of truth of God and what's right will, will, will emerge from this mess. And this mess gets pretty bad because the emerging of it seems to be if, if one takes the, the uh, Jesus' words, it will come where unless those days were shortened, all flesh would be lost. So for the mercy of the elect, the ones who have chosen or been chosen in following in God's plans, for their for their mercy, things will be shortened. The days will be shortened. So we know the reason why God comes in and says, all right, that's enough. It's because if he doesn't, it, nothing would be here. It would get so bad. So if you're, you're hoping on uh, Jim Jordan or any of these guys DeSantis or any of these guys or Trump or any of these guys to come in and do the thing, you're picking, you're picking the wrong guy. If they do, if things do work out, it's because of God entering space and time and doing things. And the reason why he's doing stuff is be mercy for how terrible it'll be. This is what keeps me up at night. This is why I'm trying to write the, how do I say these things? How do I roll these plates in the air and say, look, how do I, you know, if people... Some people I've known, my, my sister, you know, God bless her. She, she doesn't want to listen. This is going to, she, under, she got it. She understands it, how, how bad things are. doesn't want to hear me keep saying it. I, I understand. And I don't want to keep saying it. That's why I keep going and teaching 
uh, what I know, I'm sharing, I should say, what I know from uh, studying Jesus' words, because those are the words of life, those are the words of hope. You can't look short-sighted here. When Peter walked out on the ocean, uh, the sea, he's walking in, 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 you know, and he looked at the storm and he saw the, the waves and he started to sink. And he said, help. Jesus immediately reached out and, and helped him. This is where we're at now. I see nothing but storms around me. Everywhere I look, there's storms. I have to go, wait a minute. I got to not prepare because no matter what happens, I may die tomorrow. You know, I, I may be attacked by some of the bad stuff on there. If that part is irrelevant, because as long as I'm doing God's will while my life is, I have God's mercy, his grace, and his protection so that whatever happens to me is allowed to happen to me for a greater good, for others, people around. Sometimes you got to take it on the chin to help someone else. That's part of the holy LARP. Only I don't want to use the word LARP because it's a LARP is a bunch of people, right, doing stuff for various reasons. This is the holy plan here. We help one another. We we even we try and even help our enemies when possible, because that shining, you know, let your light shine in such a way that God will get the glory. So if I do something nice, oh, you're a nice guy. Perhaps God's a great God. You know, I'm doing these things because God is working through me. Because I've learned that God is the only answer. Now, the problem is it's the same way in the sun and when things are nice. When things are great, when there's plenty, when there's no wars, there's no evils, it's still the truth. God is still. But unfortunately, when we get into those areas, we end up getting in a position where we get lost in the materialness of it. And then when our when when we as as a world get in the materialness, into power, into lust and greed and all this stuff, things fall apart and it gets down bad. And it's like sometimes when it gets bad enough, the light shines all the greater in the darkness. So this is what I think we have to do in this, is that all the things that are happening now in government, in the, in, in the COVID stuff, is all meant to bring about tyranny. And the people who supported the tyrannists, tyrannists, tyr- tyr- Tyrannists, the bad guys, the people who have worked for them, you think you're going to get rewards? It's the opposite of God, remember. Remember, when you look at evil, it's the opposite of God. God is the opposite of evil. When you support evil and do wrong for best of evil, they turn around and know you can't be trusted. You just betrayed a friend. You betrayed your family. You betrayed whatever. I can't trust you. Well, they're going to get rid of you. When Mao Zedong came into towns and he had his traitors in the town that helped them, when he were killing people, he killed them. He goes, hey, you're a traitor. I can't trust you. So the people who were on the bad side, serving the bad side, masters, thinking they're going to get a little bone in the end, no, no. When you're not needed anymore, you're dead. You're pushed off to the side. You're, you're, you're a used tissue because the way evil works is everything is based on what is good for that, for that evil person. And when you go up the chain... The only reason why there's a chain is because the tie at the top doesn't want to do the bad stuff. Dudes don't want to do, I mean, the, the mundane stuff, the dirty. He wants to sit at the top with all the possible greatness and what have you. And so there's going to need people under him. But don't think anyone is deserving of it. You're just, unfortunately, you're, you're actually unliked by them. You're a necessary, if they could just have a bunch of robots doing it all, they would do it in a second, which is what the goal, I guess, would be. But of course, so now you got rid of the population. You only have a handful of managers working with robots. What are you going to do for power at that point? You start looking at your your fellow Earth owner, you know, the big the big shots at the top. There's got to be one. Because if not, there's going to be fighting until there is one. Now, Perhaps this is where the Antichrist will come in and he will keep them in line because he'll be the town on the top, I, you know, whatever. But this is what I what I see going on. And I'm encouraged by things that are happening. People are standing up and saying, no, we're not going to get the shot. 
you're going to fire me, fire me, right? There might be lawsuits pending, going to be pending in court. They may lose in these lawsuits. But my problem is I'm looking at the timelines going, you know, what well, they're acting kind of recklessly and they're kind of acting like they've already won. And even though they haven't, according to our views, they are acting like they have. So I'm led to believe that the, from their perspective is that if all of a sudden there's all these court cases of all of these companies and the government doing wrong by mandating the, the vaccine, and if the vaccine has a nefarious uh, effect, like, you know, illness or what have you down the way, you already got the vaccine, right? So, and this, the financial system will collapse. It won't be able to handle any kind of recompense. And they're going to go like, fine with me, because... I have all my other riches in all other type of trading things so that I'm diversified. I'm not just depending on the money you have in the bank because that could disappear. You could just, it already has done in other countries. They only, they took percentages to try and uh, make it back. That stuff is, isn't real. They're even, even holding the price of gold and silver down while they're buying it up themselves because of their, uh, their paper situation. They're keeping the price lower. So, you can actually buy some gold and silver now and have it, but what happens when they make it illegal to have? Or you have to only have it to a, a registered gold buyer or seller who gives you whatever price they say. I mean, you th- talk about, uh, you're talking about Bitcoin. Oh, yeah, we got Bitcoin. Nothing can do about that. Yes, they can. These things are not anonymous. You have They have the computer power to unwind these uh, Bitcoins and find out where they go from. And all you have to do, I mean, remember back in the, in the days with the churches, uh, with the, uh, the witches, all they have to do is say you're a witch. You don't have to prove it. They prove it with some goofy stuff. <clears throat> anyway, I, I don't say these things to get people down, to depress them, to pull the rug out from under them. I don't do it for that. I mean, Socrates did the same thing, and he was end up killed for it. So, I mean, I understand, and this is why, I, but I'm saying that, and I'm not saying things that nobody else can figure out either. And maybe somebody knows this stuff, and by hearing this, they're going like, yeah, you know, I, I, they're getting some kind of a validation. I don't know how it's going to work, right? But I got to say what I got to say. I got to do my part and what I can, whether I help somebody by opening a door, give somebody else some money if they need help, or if I do the show and somebody listens and something happens. I got to do what I got to do because I'm serving God. I'm serving God. And following the principles of Jesus. So I got to do this stuff. And because I'm open to these things, people can challenge. And they go, well, oh, you're not doing it. You're not doing God's will, blah, blah, blah. I'll explain it. Because believe me, I've thought about all the stuff that I do. I have to explain it to God. I can obviously explain it to you. I, I'm not sitting in a position like, hey, how do you know? I'm so higher and under, I've understood things and I've read this. I know more than you. You don't know me. I can't do it. I mean, I've always sat down and explain why I think and believe what I do. There's a reason for it. It's not because, well, you know, Ma told me, or it's my church, the, the pastor of my church told me, or, well, it was my political party told me, or, you know, the law says. All of it, I have to be able to understand and explain and justify my actions. That's how I go through life. And what I see is happening is a giant role-playing by the government, and, and and if you want to go up, say Satan in the background, right, doing all this stuff, is he getting everybody to do what he wants for his benefit, and everybody's expendable. That's why I've been hemming and hawing about doing something like this, is because, you know, I get to the end and I go, well, okay, so what, what can we do to stop this? I don't have an answer. It's not that I have the answer, don't want to. It's not that I'm afraid to defend my answer. I don't have an answer other than you have your own personal relationship with God. And my, the person who has put me in that situation is Jesus, right? And I have those those teachings, follow him. And I have my own personal interaction with God here and there as it comes. And I can, I know it and feel it and show it, you know, can see it. I can't prove stuff like this to people all the time, but all I have to worry about is me. You know, I got to do it for me. I got to do the right things. I'm going to meet God someday, and I want it to be really wonderful. And anything I have to work out or uh, uh, apologize for or whatever, I, I will do it because I, I know in the end 
it's going to be more wonderful than anyone could imagine because we have limited consciousness here. We may be the highest consciousness consciousness on the earth. Well, you know, some people say dolphins or what have you, but we may be the highest consciousness on the earth. This is nothing compared to the higher levels. And I want to go up, not down. And this is what, what's driving me. I want to know truth. If you find truth in reality, it's your friend. Even when it's bad news, it's good news because you're grounded in truth. So if you have to change some view you've had or something or whatever, or by continuing on this path is going to lead to some kind of material uh, depravity or sacrifice, you're on the right path. You have to stick with it because God is going to come and stop this LARP at some point. The reality will shine in. If you are on the real side, reality side, it's going to be a good thing. That's why it says in the Bible that when when the Son of Man comes, people will pray or call out for the mountains to cover them because they can't see it. Those are the people who are living in the LARP side. If you're living in the light side, you're not perfect. you got stuff that maybe you have to, uh, you know, deal with. But your overall energy is like you want God to come. You want to go through those fires and burn off those details so that you're pure, so that when God comes, it's going to be the greatest kind of reunion. Or when you die and meet, however. It's going to be a good thing. And I'm not saying God's harsh. He's going to be like, I, mean, I don't know. You're one point short. Sorry. Burn in hell. No, no, no. That, a lot of this stuff is mankind talking. I'm saying that when you are, you want to do these things. So reality is your friend. Fantasy is not your friend. The LARP system, the world system is out. They're, they're, they're using people for where, where it goes one, we go all. That's a phrase to get you all to follow. To see why they sit up on top and use you as farm animals for what they're going to do. And if a farm animal, you got a horse that can't be broken, you got a, you know, I don't know, a pig that won't listen, well, you know, that's the one that gets killed. This is what they're looking at. And when you look on God's side, God wants you to be the best you can be. He wants you to help the best you can be. And even in the darkest times, that could be used to meet that goal. This is how I live and how I can give a get up in the morning is with these principles. So I I hope that if someone's still listening at this point, they're encouraged to become closer to God, to get through what is apparently coming, and that in that relationship is the only way that you're going to be able to get through it. I mean, you know, back when the martyrs were being led on fire, there's stories about them all singing and stuff while they're burning. That's impossible to do, right? But through God, all things are possible. So you could avoid the burning or you could get through the burning using those extremes. But with God, it's there's a positiveness that leads to it. You can't I can't see it. You're telling me I'm gonna be burned tomorrow. I'm not gonna go, oh go, good, it's gonna work out okay, no problem. I can't see that, right? Because I'm a human being and I'm a frail and I'm I, I have I have my fears, I have my hopes. I can't see that, but I have to hold to that. I have to make myself go, I have to stick with that. All right, I do talk in extremes a lot because I think it's easier to see the differences. That's why I bring this stuff up. I mean, I, you know, and if the extremes do happen, well, then you're, it still applies. So, All right, I'll leave it there. I'm uh, I'm sorry about the two parts. I'll, 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 I guess we'll just I'll, I'll, either I'll blend them together or I'll just leave them be. But I will see you. Uh, and I will see you next time.
Feet to Fire is a production of IPS Media Works on the Onsig Radio Network of Stations.